Hey everybody, I am Brian Goulet. I'm Drew Brown. And we are here from Goulet Pens to show you the hottest fountain pens, mainly hottest new fountain pens yes. of 2023 from what we've seen at Goulet Pens. This is our eighth annual roundup like this that we've done. We did I it think since so. 2016. I think so. If we can math properly. The, I, it's been a, a, I'm not a, that confident about it, but... <laughs> eight years, give or take one. Thankfully, there's not a lot of math involved. We are literally just counting down yeah. the list of our favorite pens. So this is gonna be a highly subjective list that you know ultimately is really just our opinion. So you may disagree with it, you may agree with it, but either way, we're gonna serve it up to you, however we feel. It's loosely based on what's sold well, but it's also pretty subjective as to what we thought like got the best response and what was the most exciting for folks. So um, we're gonna kind of loosely do a countdown sort of a thing, but you know, it's completely our opinion, so. <laughs> Feel free to disagree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll kind of start out with the, the coolest stuff and get up to the hottest. Yes. Uh, so we'll kind of build up to it. So make sure you stick around to the end. Um, so let's uh, kick it off with number one, shall we? Or is this number 10? <clears throat> oh, crap. Yeah, I guess this is number 10. Let's kick it off with <laughs> whatever. Number 10, number one, whichever. <laughs> number 10, the first one, Are there which 10? is number 10. Yeah, I numbered ten. it. It's 10. Okay, cool. It is 10. 10. All right. All right, let's do it. Edison Premier Dragoness. All right, so this pen we launched in September of this year. This was a Goulet exclusive, which honestly the model of the Edison Premier has been our exclusive all along. All the premieres that have ever existed have been Goulet The longest running Goulet exclusive and the first yeah, Goulet exclusive. It was the first one back, we started 2011 was the first uh, Premier exclusive that we did. It's a lot of history um, here. We've done many, many, many seasonal variations and stuff like that, um, but we've taken a little break from that. And this is the first one we've done in a couple of years. So we were excited to bring it back. The response is pretty good. And this Dragonus material, this is the first one that we've ever done in collaboration with Jennifer Early of Stormwinds. So that was exciting and new for us. Great to bring uh, a relatively newer up and coming artist to the, to the forefront. She's doing a lot of collaborations with other companies too. So it's great to see nice kind of a gray, like translucent color. We haven't done a lot of translucents in the premiere yeah. in years past either. So that was kind of new. Some beautiful other colors in there, like, you know, some pinks and yellows, some golds, whites, whites yeah, and some nice gorgeous color. Very unique materials. too. That was, that was the thing that really hooked me. Absolutely. I hadn't seen anything like it. Heck of yeah. a comeback. Now they're not available anymore. They came, they went, but you know, we had to start it off with that and just make note of that because it was really special this year. The revival of Delta. Now, Brian, the Delta Pen Company mm -hmm. was a thing, became no longer a thing. Yep. And late last year, they became a thing again. Yeah. The Delta Pen Company was reborn. It was. Um, <clears throat> with uh, at least a portion of its original owners taking the mm -hmm. helm and bringing it into the modern age. Mm -hmm. But this year in 2023, that's when we really saw pens from Delta yeah. really start flowing. I think they had one pen that came back last year. Yeah. But it wasn't like quite the same as the normal Deltas, but this is the one where they, they revived. Once they it, like, certainly you look did. at it and you're like, that's Delta. They did, they brought back the DV original. Uh, we saw the Duna, the Blue Grotto, the Lapis Blue, our Blue Demo, the DV Oversize, and they are poised to bring more to the market as well. So Absolutely. that was a big deal. Having a company, especially a legacy company like Delta with such a well-known presence within the community and the industry, come back after such a prolonged period of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, limbo Hiatus, yeah. um, <laughs> is a big deal. So mm -hmm. definitely worth mentioning. And I would say that response has been pretty good. Really I has. think the pens have been well received. So mm -hmm. as far as comebacks go, I'd call this one a success. It yeah. came back. It still has that original spirit. They're using a lot of the same materials too. So it's not mm -hmm. like the manufacturing is now a completely different thing these are all manufactured using the same Delta machines and yeah. a lot of the same Delta components. So a pretty solid resurgence of Delta, if I'd say so. Yeah, as far as revivals go, this is about as much of a true revival as you can have. Cause Completely it was like same agree. factory, same materials, everything was kind of frozen in time. And then it just started back up again. It's not like where it was like, sunsetted and broke apart and sold it in different pieces and then somebody else revived the name, but it's not really the same Exactly. Pens. This is like as true to form as you can get. So it's really exciting to see that come. The Sailor Northern Lights Blue. Now it's no secret that we like blue around here. And you know, we followed up with 
the successful Northern Lights we did last year, which was Northern Lights Purple, uh, and we did a blue this year, which obviously was very exciting, especially to me personally. Uh, beautiful pen, always great to be able to do a collaboration with Sailor. Uh, we did this in the Pro Gear and the Pro Gear Slim sizes. Uh, as of right now, we actually still have some, but it's a special edition. It's probably not gonna be around all that long. We're not reordering. So, you know, if you're watching it now, hey, they're still around, but you know, not for long. So if you're interested, go check those out. But beautiful pens, a blue translucent material with some silver shimmer in it and lime green translucent with shimmer in it too for the grip and the finials. It just looks really sharp. And, um, you know, we're glad to be, have been able to do that with Sailor this year. So Northern Lights Blue. The Esterbrook SD. Now the Esterbrook SD is not a new pen. No, nope. it was around Esterbrook also a brand that saw a bit of a resurgence, you know, mm -hmm. that one's been a little bit more of a slow climb mm -hmm. and they've been taking their time. When the SD came out, that was been a, that's been a well-received pen, but it wasn't until this year, Brian, that the SD just picked up a ton of steam. Yeah. It started off when they at Esterbrook decided that they would gather together, you know, what, four or five different nib technicians mm -hmm. um, that would then tune and grind some specialty nibs mm -hmm. that they would then attach to their Estes and sell as these special made nibs that normally you can't get right. through retailers. Normally you'd have oh, to yeah. get an appointment, wait, either find somebody at a pen show to get these specialty grinds, but the people at Esterbrook decided to get that done beforehand and then distribute those to the world, which is a big deal, and it's never been done before. Yeah. So that is a big deal. So the specialty nibs from Kirk Spear, Josh Lax, um, CY, and, and then Gina, uh, Salarino. Gina Salarino all got put on the Botanical Gardens SD at first. That was hugely successful. And then later we saw those nibs appear on other pens, subsequent pens like the Nouveau Blue and some additional ones as well. And that has been just such a game changer. Yeah. And from a community impact, it's brought attention to these really, really talented and skilled artisans and technicians that have been doing this for years. Yeah. But putting the spotlight on them is both a win for the end user and a win for these really talented people within our community that are really creating some special things that allow folks to have a really unique writing experience. On top of that, Esterbrook also collaborated with Ferris Wheel Press on a stunning pen that again just shook things up in the best way possible. And again, it was an SD. So yeah. the SD in 2023 really was a mover and really was a shaker. Absolutely. Magna Carta Mag 600. So this next one on the list, this is kind of a latecomer in the year here. It didn't come out till October. And it's from a relatively unknown brand, Magna Carta, uh, an Indian brand, which is cool because we don't often get to feature uh, as much, you know, of the stuff that comes from India, even though they make some decent pens. They do. So this was really cool, especially for this model of pen because of the nib that's on it. The pen itself is relatively straightforward. Uh, nice ebonite pen, ebonite feed, stuff like that, which is cool. But it's the flexible nib that really stood out on this pen. When we used it for the first time and talked to the manufacturer about how they make it, we were like, oh, this is like legit. This is kind of the flex nib that people always say, why can't they make them like they used to? Well, he's literally making them like they used to, which is why this nib feels a little different. So if you want kind of the truest flex nib that you can get to the vintage way that they used to be, that's what's gonna be happening on the Mag 600. So we got some in, they sold out basically immediately. We kind of restocked towards the end of the year. Don't know how long those are gonna last either, but came up with a couple extra colors and stuff. So I think it's something that's gonna really build up steam, but uh, definitely noteworthy pen that came out for us this year. The Visconti Mirage Mythos. Now, the Mirage Mythos by Visconti did launch late last year. Yeah, technically this wasn't the hottest it's, pen of this well, year, was it? it well, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it got hot this year. Okay. That's my thing. So, so yeah. it arrived last year, but it wasn't hot last year. Mm. But late last year, it really started picking up steam. And then throughout 2023, it became it, it entered into the hot zone. I'd there you say go. there you go. Definitely entered into the hot Slow zone. Slow boil, yeah. So uh, Roll, they rolling first boil. <laughs> absolutely yes, rolling boil. Um, they introduced three colors uh, to begin with. All three lovely. All three paired with this really gorgeous satin gold mm. that Visconti also started doing relatively recently. They, yeah. We saw that on the Opera Gold. We see it mm -hmm. now on the Mythos Mirage Mirage Mythos, and then later in the year. 
November of mm-hmm. 2023, they came out with a fourth color, all which are performing really, really well, both on the uh, for retailers and in the hands of our writing friends across the world. And this pen, I think, just deserves a spot of recognition because mm-hmm. not only was it popular in terms of just people buying it and liking it, but what it did for Visconti was notable because you're taking a very popular brand that usually lives up in that premium zone, you know, yeah. and it created an accessible, was it like somewhere around $200? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. an ex- a price accessible pen that writes like a luxury instrument. Yeah. And that is hard to do. We have seen many luxury top tier pen brands try to create that entry level pen that both is an entry level pen, but also feels like that brand. And it hasn't always worked. In fact, I don't know if it ever has, but it did with the Mythos. It really did. I've been extraordinarily pleased with it. I own one. I love it. I can't stop talking about it. I was going to say, your video is part of the reason why I think it made a splash because that really took off last year. I feel strongly about it. But just, it it was, as far as what was hot, it was popular. It Mm -hmm. was enjoyed by the writers. And it had what I consider to be a very noticeable impact on a very popular brand. Yeah. It's great to see. Lamy All-Star Petrol. Now, this launched in February this year, which is interesting because not that there's like strict rules for this, but usually Lamy does their Safari, safari first. For, yeah. Right? So, safari first and then All-Star second. Yeah. One of them is usually in April, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they did that this year. They did February and April just like they normally right. do, but it's usually swaps. Usually ah. it's Safari and then All-Stars. This year they did All-Star then Safari. Hmm. So that was kind of cool. But okay. um, when they came out with both of these, both the colors were actually really cool. Got what was the props, other one? Lilac. Lilac. Lilac looked really good too, but I think Petrol stole the show a little bit. Um, so this was coming off of what I would consider the success of the Petrol Safari that they did back in 2017. Also very popular. That was amazing. It, it might be... My favorite safari. More than the dark lilac? (sighs) Dark lilac has a special place in my heart, but just objectively, I think I like petrol just a little bit more. Yeah. So that's, uh, but either way, both gorgeous pens. Um, Does that mean that the petrol all-star is your favorite all-star? Ooh, that's a tough one. There's some tough competition up there because Lamy's done some banger all-stars. It does look good though. looks really good. It looks really sharp. And it is a true companion to the Safari version. The the lilac all-star versus the old dark lilac, not exactly a one-to-one. Yeah. But petrol and petrol, I'd say great cousins. They look really great. Uh, very popular. Obviously, it's a Lamy. It's always going to do well, uh, but they really nailed it with this color, so I had to put it on the list. The Pilot Custom 743. So the Pilot Custom 743 has been available in Japan for a number of years. Yes. Has not been available here nope. in the United States. Late last year, though, it arrived so that our friends across America can purchase it. It didn't, again, kind of like the Mirage Mythos, it didn't, like explode in popularity in, at first, but it, it was rising. It sure, was rising. Sure. It was going up there. But then in April, the Verdigree came mm. out and then it really did explode. It absolutely yeah. became hot. But let me mm-hmm. say this, Brian, the Verdigree, Custom 743, mm-hmm. US exclusive. Yes. Like when I say US exclusive pilot, pilot. What, what what happens in your brain? Like I'm like, wait, what? does not compute. This is not a thing that happens. Right? It's a big deal, y'all. <laughs> That's awesome. It's the I believe is it the first US exclusive pilot like um, at all? I remember I don't know. I don't know. It, it was I don't a know big if I can deal. say that with conviction because they've been around for a long time. If it, if it's not, it's the first one that we can remember. Certainly rare and special for it to happen. Rare and special. And when it arrived, not only was it important because it was a US exclusive, but it looked great. It was a beautiful looking pen. Oh, yeah. And then the 743 really did explode. In fact, it still does look great, I would say. It still does. You're yeah. right. It looks mm-hmm. exactly the same. Great <laughs> is great forever. <laughs> but it has a ton of fun nib sizes available for it if you choose to go with the black or the verdigree. And mm-hmm. that, and it's a great size, too. If the Custom 74 is just a little too narrow for you, you like the 823, but you're not in love with the vac filler, the 743 is the perfect pen for you. And that great size with the nib sizes. And for me, the classic cartridge can Converter is the mm-hmm. situation I want on my fountain pen. So it hits all of the bullseyes for me. And mm-hmm. clearly it hit a bunch for a lot of other people because it's been a hot pen this year. And for me personally, this is just a thing on the 743. It's got that number 15 size nib, which is the same as the 823. So previously, some of the specialty nibs like the Falcon nib, you could or the FA nib, 
you could only get that on the number 10 size pilot custom 912 mm -hmm. i always had just particular way angle that i hold it i always had challenges getting the the kind of the flexibility of the fa to work well but that's like all fixed on this larger nib so i don't know what's different about it or maybe i just pen's bigger or something i don't know but it just works better for me so it is a pleasant experience it's a, it's a great nib yeah. and it's a great pen the twisby eco indigo with bronze trim now i love me some eco it's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, like intro level pens. It's the pen that I will like gift to most people who are, I really want them to see like truly what is a fountain pen. I mean, it's great to have a thing like a Varsity or something that's like a really attainable, inexpensive, but the Eco to get like the piston and you see the ink inside of it. To me, that's really cool. And you get the wrench and take it apart. I'm a fiddler, so I love all that. So I'm kind of an Eco fanboy to begin with. But you don't miss one. When this pen, yeah, I'm like, basically it's just de facto now. Every pen that comes out, I'm like, oh, taking that one. Uh, but when this one came out, the indigo with the bronze trim, I'm like, mm. first off, it's like a shade of blue, which of course I'm going to love anyway. But the bronze trim too, it looks so good. It looks so good. It really does. So it's like a deeper, like richer color than like a rose gold trim would be, which Twisby's done a bunch of those and they look great. Don't they get look, me wrong. Yeah. But the darker indigo color with the bronze trim, which really like grounds it. And it's got kind of an earthier kind of look to it. Oh boy, it just hits all the right spots for me. They had released the Royal Jade in rose gold, which, which I loved. Like that was, to, to date, I think that was the best looking Twisby Eco they've ever done. But then mm -hmm. when the indigo and bronze came out, I like, just immediately thought, mm. well, how good would the green look like with that bronze, though? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out in 2024. It was a, it was hey. a slam run, I think. <laughs> a slam run. Yeah. It's a home dunk. Home Absolutely. dunk. Absolutely. Uh, but anyway, personal favorite of mine. This definitely falls into more of the premium, so it's going to cost more because, of the, I mean, I'm sure the bronze trim and stuff cost more. That's usually how the rose golds work, too. Um, but still, it's such a good value. It's like around 50 bucks. I mean, come on. So I think this one's going to be popular for quite some time, and uh, I'm really glad to see it have come out this year. Do you want to cover some honorable mentions, Brian? I think so. Maybe some things that didn't yeah. quite deserve a number in our ranking, but were notable nonetheless. Well, you know how I like to roll. Anytime we come up with a list, even if we arbitrarily come up with it. What? I got to cram more in there. Because no. I'm like, I can't even keep it to 10. So we have some honorable mentions that are worth, maybe it's like didn't quite qualify, we felt. Or it's just like regular pens that we always have. It wasn't new, but still worth mentioning. So we got a few of those to mention, and then we'll get to number one. So one thing that's worth mentioning is that 2023, as far as what we could see, was kind of the year of the dip pen. Yeah, because seems like it, huh? we had Sailor and Pilot both decide to launch dip pens into the market, which they had not done in the US pre previously. Right. So the Pilot pen was the Utsushi, and that is just a dip nib. You'll find that it has the same nib as the Metropolitan, the Explorer, the Prera, the Kakuno. Mm -hmm. But it's fitted onto a nib holder, just like, you know, you would have, it's just a tapered nib holder like you would see on a calligraphy pen. Uh, I don't, they, it's kind of removable, kind of not. Either way, it works. It doesn't hold a ton of ink, but it's great for dipping, easy to clean. And if you want to swatch your ink still using a pilot nib that you're familiar with, then you can get it now. Mm -hmm. Sailor came out with the Hokuro dip nib, and they came out with that dip nib pen um, in sets with some crazy fun inks yeah. by itself in multiple nib sizes. Like they went all in on that pen they really and it's a fun pen. So That's that cool. pen has a clear barrel with a removable grip section and nib that you can invert to store it and then flip it around then to write with a removable uh, ink reservoir mm -hmm. to allow you to hold more ink. Mm -hmm. It's a fun pen to write with, a lot of great nib sizes and some truly wacky inks. They came out with shimmer inks and sheening inks. Again, something they hadn't done in the States before. I know. Like I'm kind loving of it. wild. Keep it coming. I'll, well, I can, Brian, because <laughs> in addition to those, we picked up a brand called Kakimori. And when I say pick up a brand, I mean picked up a nib. So they have a very special brass or stainless steel, uh, stainless steel in our case, dip nib mm -hmm. that is a solid piece of metal mm -hmm. with these um, kind of flutes, flutes along yeah. the mm -hmm. edges that do a great job holding ink. It's so easy to clean, but the kicker is that depending on your angle, high versus low, you get to write with different line widths. So it's yeah. kind of like 10 nibs all in one. It's, it's cool. fantastic, Normally easy a, to clean. Yeah, like we've had glass dip pens and stuff like that. And that's those are cool and they're fun, especially great for like testing ink samples and just getting a sense of the color. Uh, but those are pretty fixed. You know, you really don't get to vary up your experience at all. 
Right. And they're also random kind of from one to another because yeah. those are handmade and polished and stuff. So, but this one is like, it's very versatile and it's very precision too, which is cool. It is. It's a lot of fun to write with. So I would just got a kick out of the fact that we had these three big introductions into the dip nib category where previously, yeah. like you said, we only had these uh, glass pens. So yeah. that was definitely noteworthy of this year. All right. Next one I have to mention, these are hot mostly because I really like them and think they're cool <laughs> and they're really beautiful, but they're expensive. And so like, they didn't sell a lot necessarily, and they're not attainable to most people. But they, the so okay, the pens are the Namiki Aya and the Pilot Custom Yurushi. Now these have a new Pilot nib on them, which is mostly why I want to talk about them because I think it's my favorite nib. Uh, I'm still debating about that, but it's it's really, 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 really high up on my list. Um, it's got a Pilot number thirty size nib, which is second only in size to the. Uh, pilot number 50, which comes on the Emperor, which is just a massive nib. So this is a big nib, looks gorgeous. Same nib comes on both pens and the pens respective, irrespective of each other are beautiful standalone, but they're both Yurushi pens. So it's like in the higher end, lots of handwork. So the artisanal kind of craftsmanship quality is superb. Custom Yurushi is a huge pen. It's large in the hand. I absolutely love it. It fits my giant ape hands perfectly and I love everything about it. So that's really cool. But then the Aya is a little more artistic. You get some actual like design and um, some more true kind of like Machie artwork on there. So also Yurushi, but you get some more art and design work. They have four different designs. They all look amazing. And it is on the more affordable <clears throat> side of of, of a Namiki Maki, yeah. with Urushi artwork. Yeah, you're in like the $3,400, $3,500 range, somewhere there. But the size so with the nib, like if you were to get like a Yukari Royale with that artwork on there, yeah, it'd be you'd more be expensive. in a four, five, six, seven grand yeah. easily. So yeah, so it's a little bit more attainable there. Nibs, Comparably. Nibs are amazing. The pens write great. So I just had to mention them. All right, and then we'll kind of wrap up the honorable mentions here, just talking about some pens that have been available. They're not new, but... They're really popular. Still hot. And still hot. Uh, first one is going to be a Lamy 2000. That pen has been hot for basically 50 plus years. Um, still continues to be a top seller for us because it's awesome. Uh, and then the Benu Euphoria Iced Caramel Latte. That pen still continues to be hot, almost as if it was in a Contigo mug. It just stays hot <laughs> forever. Um, and then the Pilot Custom 823. Both yeah. the Amber and the Smoke do really well, but you put them together and it's just like one of my most popular pens. Yep. So love it. That's why 743 does well too, is because it's very similar, close cousin. So. Yeah, a couple of their mainstays, you know that the black matte pilot vanishing point is always gonna be up there, yep. always gonna be a mainstay up at the top. Yep. It it's great started pen. hot and continues to be hot, will mm -hmm. forever be hot. Yep. And then of course the pilot E95S. Hey that is a winner that just keeps on picking up steam, getting in more people's hands and it frankly it satisfies every it's, time. It's cool pen. It's fantastic. Yep. So I don't think uh, we're going to see any of those pens. Well, I don't know. It'll we'll be on. Out. I think they're just going to keep on going. We'll, we'll see, see if our honorable mention stays the same pens every year. Yeah. But, uh, these were all very solid. And uh, without further ado, let's get to our number one pick, Drew, shall we? Let's. The Banu Euphoria Refreshment Collection. Brian, I'm just going to say it. Number one is an exclusive series. Yeah. And how exciting is that? Super exciting. The Euphoria. I mean, we made the list so we can make it whatever we want. That's right. So it's a, it's a bit rigged, but legitimately these were really popular. Yes. Though. Okay. So <laughs> Banu Euphoria Refreshment Series. So that was a series that we kicked off because we were mm -hmm. thinking about some cool drinks that might make cool th cool themes in pens. Yeah. And it worked. So like mm -hmm. you mentioned, the Ice Caramel Latte being one of the first we introduced in the series is still kicking butt. But that one wasn't wasn't super new. In this year alone, we had four new uh, refreshment series pens yeah. come out, and all of them were awesome. We had the watermelon mojito, we had the sangria, we had confetti milkshake, and we just launched Earl Grey. Mm. And I would say each has been better than the last. Like they are just continuing to outdo themselves over at Banu, and I couldn't be more excited. They're about killing it. it. They're just so great to work with. They make such amazing pens, and they write really well too. Like they're just legitimately enjoyable pens to write. And with. that's been the thing about Banu. When they first came to the industry, I think that a lot of folks were just a little overwhelmed by just the overall look. They can seem a bit extra when you're kind of first they looking at them. Well, they, they are. They're, they're they, loud. They are extra. They absolutely are extra. <laughs> but I think that folks 
didn't give them a chance. And then over the years, as they've gotten in more people's hands and mm -hmm. they've had time enough to launch enough variety that eventually you're going to see one of these Banu pens that you thought you weren't going to get a Banu until that pen showed up and then mm -hmm. you had to get a Banu and then you get it and you understand. You say, this yeah. is actually a really good pen. And what I think is one of the most, you know, contributing factors to Banu success is that they keep outdoing themselves on these designs because they actually care. Yeah. The folks that run that company put so much passion and effort into making their pens. They always are trying to push the envelope and to do something new and exciting. When they came to us and said, oh yeah, here's your Earl Grey theme pen that you, you know, kind of casually gave us the idea for, and we put actual tea leaves in there, even though you didn't ask for that. Like, that's what they do. We're like, Okay. <laughs> when they made the caramel, mil the confetti milkshake pen, they tried to put actual sprinkles in there. It didn't they work tried. out. But yeah. they tried. Like, they are always trying something new. They and go the extra mile, for sure. It's just thrilling to have them in the industry, have them serving our customers. And for us to have the opportunity to do these four exclusive pens has just been so exciting for us. Yeah, absolutely. It's an honor for us. And i uh, glad that y'all are responding really well. We're going to hopefully keep it going. So more to come. We're very thirsty here in the fountain pen world, apparently. We need refreshment. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's our list. So, you know, plenty of pens to choose from, whether you agree or disagree. We definitely love some feedback. Love to hear what you have to say in the comments. Did we miss anything? Did we nail it? Did you disagree with anything Drew said? And do you I think disagree I'm right with everything I said. Everything? <laughs> we may disagree with ourselves. It's, uh, it's okay. Um, but anyway, we just thought it would be fun to make this, kind of recap the year a little bit. It's been a lot of fun, and we hope to bring you many more good things in the year ahead. We hope you all have had a great 2023. Obviously, you can check out GoulaPens.com for all your fountain pen needs. We'd be happy to help you out, and we hope you have a great new year. Thanks for watching, and right on.